And Kizuru was like, You is a big ass nigga. Now you die. And bro kicks the shit out of Hawkins, bro. Send him buddy flying. I'm gonna be talking about how this man Kizaru straight up pulled up to Sabaori and packed it up all the supernova. Well, not all of them, but some of them. And what I mean this man straight up violated them, I mean he straight up violated them. But before I even talk about that, let's talk about why this man even came to Sabaori in the first place. So we start off at the auction where all the straw hats is at. And they over here because they trying to buy their friend, which is this mermaid here. I forgot her name. And in this auction, these motherfuckers sell all types of things. Pirates, mermaids, giants, anything you could think of. These motherfuckers, they gonna sell it just to get some money out of it. And if anybody buys them, they become their slave. Yep, that's right. You heard me. Slaves. That's kind of fucked up. And the reason why I'm telling you guys all this is because the Celestial Dragons are here. And they're one of the worst people in One Piece ever, bro. They will treat you like shit, spit on you, all of that. They will not give two fucks about you. And they will sit there and ride on you like you are a horse or something. Pause. And they got these fucking helmets on like they finna go to the moon and take off. These motherfuckers cross playing astronauts and shit. Nigga. You don't go sit your spoil you brat ass down. These motherfuckers don't want to even breathe the same air as normal human beings, bro. I bet they should be snake as fuck in there, especially this nigga with this snotty ass nose. I just realized, how the hell do they even brush their teeth? Oh, nah, these motherfuckers nasty. But anyways, and pretty much everybody is scared of these motherfuckers. Because as soon as you even try to touch them, these motherfuckers got the marines behind their back. So that means if you try to do anything stupid to them, they're gonna call the marine instantly and you're gonna get packed up. But enough about all that. The reason why I brought their attention towards you is because these motherfuckers end up buying Kami. And the crew was like, damn, bro, because they wanted to buy her back and they wanted to save her. And out of nowhere, my man Luffy, he crashed the party. And knowing Luffy, he didn't care. He was going in head first. So he was running full speed ahead to save Kami, right? And this man Hachin, he was trying to stop him because he didn't want him to get in trouble. But Luffy, he was too strong for him. So he had to use extra hands, if you know what I mean. Okay, relax. First of all, you're a grown ass man. Man, relax. Nah, bro, y'all weird. What y'all thought I was talking about, though? But anyways, as he was trying to stop Luffy, he accidentally showed all his hands. And people, they was freaking out because they hate fishmen. Like, if I didn't mention that already, they hate fishmen. They treat them like outcasts. And truthfully, to a certain extent, I understand it because, like, if you see something that's out of the ordinary, you gonna freak out, too. Y'all can't lie. <laughs> But with that being said, he let go Luffy because he realized that he messed up. And what I mean by messed up, he let his cover be blown. And Luffy still was trying to run down and save her until... My man got gunned down. Oh, he was just an innocent man. Oh, no. And after he gunned him down, this man started jumping around in joy. Motherfuckers in the crowd talking shit. So my boy Luffy started walking back up to him. And he looked so pissed right now, you would think somebody ate his last meal. But even after all that Hachin, he tries to stop him. Basically telling him like he's the one who fucked up. He's the one that did terrible things to Nami and he just wanted to make it up to her. And he was just putting the blame all on him. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost cried. And even after all that, this dude still wanted to fuck it up. Man's basically told him, stop all that yapping before I blow your fucking brains out. And my man Luffy gave him the most devious glare ever. And man started walking up to him in slow-mo. He started clutching his fists up. Man's was building up all that anger he had. And this motherfucker is a bozo. Because he tries to shoot Luffy the first time and that bullet passes him. Then he shoots at Luffy again and then he dodges it. And Luffy, he slides that foot over, cocks that arm back, and punched the shit out of him. Fuck making him see red. This man made him see black and white. And sent Buddy flying through chairs and shit. Literally one of the most satisfying punches in anime. And I don't know if y'all realize this or not. But that wasn't no normal punch. First off, Luffy punches him straight up and this man went the other way. And second, this man Luffy didn't even break his helmet. Nah, that punch made his helmet fly off his head. He almost made that shit look like it was just a plastic bag. That is actually insane. But enough about that. Now y'all know the reason. 
reason why Kizaru gonna be pulling up with the Marines and all that. But before we even get to that, there's two fights I wanna go over. Law, Luffy, and Kid going against the Marines. That's the first one. In the second, the Scry has going against the Pacifista. I just had to let y'all know before y'all be like, bro, what happened to Kizaru packing up the Supernova, bro? But knowing y'all, y'all rock with me for real. And I rock with y'all, so y'all probably won't even say that. But anyways, let me stop be up yapping and let me just get into it. Three hours later. So Law, Luffy, and Kid put us up in front of the auction house. And they were surrounded by a bunch of Marines. And they started shooting some cannonballs at them. And Luffy just blows up into a balloon and just bounced them shits right back at him. And next, this man Kid must be had the will of the force inside of him. The force is strong in this one. The force is with you, young Skywalker. Shout out to the Star Wars fans. Because the way how this man paused this cannon and deflected right back towards them was just so clean. And next, this man Law created a whole room and this man just over here yip yapping. Like, do you not see this room you're in, bro? Anyways, this man Law pops his head off. And this man Law switches the marine head with a cannonball and blows them up. And not only that, he was tossing his head up smiling. And to be honest, this is probably the most happiest I ever seen Law. Like, once time skip happened, this man have a straight poker face the whole time and buddy had that little calm little fit on but anyways after all that these marines were still teed up ready to shoot them and this man kid disrespectfully put his hand in front of both of their faces talking about some leave this shit to me while law was like did you even take a bath nigga with these musty ass arms and it had to be stink because this man luffy took off running and they started shooting more cannonballs at him and this man created a rubber finger net and catches all the cannonballs and starts slinging them shits around in circles and one of them hoes came loose and it was heading right towards Cad and law and if they didn't hop out the way they would have got blown up but anyways, the Marines thought that this man Luffy wasn't paying attention. They start running towards him and this man Luffy, he slunk all those shits right back at them. And then they fired up another round at him, had my boy doing jumping jacks. Then they all start running towards him again. This man knocked them all in the road like some dominoes. Then they shoot at him again and blows his head off and he just catches it. And each group of Marines that's here has to be their first time in battle. First of all, just look at their stance. They're not ready. And you got this motherfucker standing in space looking like, Oh, when is gonna be my next meal? Cause I'm hungry. And on top of that, just watch how goofy these motherfuckers run. Motherfuckers running like they have no brain cells in sight. Look, this bitch over here about to fall. Anyways, this man can't magnetically grab all their weapons and knocks it right back at them. Bro had them running back. That's crazy. And next, after all that, this man law, he tosses the marine head back towards them. And they was over here playing hot potato with this man head. And I still just can't get over the fact how this man Law is just smiling, bro. If y'all would have told me two years later that Law would have had a serious face, I wouldn't even believe y'all because how this man was just smiling. But anyways, bro creates a room and slices up all of Marine's body into little bits. And next, this man Luffy uses third gear and make this giant fist. While this man Kid is gathering up all their weapons, and why is this man hanging on to the cannon for dear life? Just hop off. But yeah, with that, this man Kid created a giant arm with their weapons. Then after that, this man Law did them so dirty. This man rearranged these Marines' whole body parts, bro. Motherfuckers had a head attached to a barrel, a head glued to four arms. And I think this dude right here got it the worst. He got his head glued onto his ass. Like, that's disrespectful as hell. And while they were stuck, like that Luffy and Kid just finished them off with a giant fist and left them there looking like trash later that day all right so one of the pasta feasts pulled up right and the crew thought it was kuma because i mean he looked exactly like kuma but what kind of gave it away when this man tries to shoot luffy with a beam and if luffy didn't dodge that it was ggs but my boy frankie he wasn't letting that slide i mean my man pulls out that air blicky and the reason why i call it that air blicky is because this man pumps up his arm with air and moves the pasta feast with air pressure sending bro flying all the way to the tree but then immediately this man gets right back up and right after that this man luffy goes second gear and he tells the crew to go all out because he realized that this is not going to be an easy battle so the pastor feaster began shooting a laser out of his mouth and this man luffy he dodges it and while luffy running from it it shoots a beam at him but he jumps over it and as he continuously run it continuously shoots at him and now you may notice that Usopp, brook and frankie is behind luffy and the reason why i'm pointing that out 
out is because it's getting ready to fire another beam at Luffy. And yeah, of course, Luffy, he dodges it. But them, just barely. No boys ran the four flat. They were trying to get up out of there. Shit, I'll do the same thing. Motherfucker shooting beams and shit at me. Hell, hell no. Nah. You got me fucked up, my guy. But anyways, Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji was running towards it and they was getting ready to go for a full force attack. But in the process, it was shooting beams at them, but as you can see, they had no trouble dodging it. And as they finally closed in on it, they went for their full force attack and they was beating the hell out of it until they was able to knock it back. But it wasn't enough. Not just yet, it got back up with some red eyes. And when it got back up, oh, it got back up. It started shooting laser beams everywhere it had my man Luffy on the run and Zoro he was trying to sneak up on him and it shoots a beam at him but luckily Zoro dodges it and while Zoro was in the air he uses his 108 caliber phoenix and was able to catch it with it next Sanji pulls up with the kick to the back of his leg knocking it off balance a little bit and next Zoro hops out the dust cloud and he was going for an attack but the pastafista shoots him and he had to dodge it then as he lands on the ground the pastafista immediately started to charge up his beam then as Menzoro started to get PSTD from fighting Kuma then he started hurting because he was still injured from that battle he haven't fully recovered himself but he has to get out of this situation one way or another so with that being said the pastafista shoots the beam out his mouth and Sanji told Zoro to lock in before he get fried and Zoro just barely dodges the beam bro and right now it's not looking so good for the scrawl hats because if they don't lock in right now, it's over for the whole crew. So Zoro tries to take another chance at it. But Chopper was basically like, nah, I got this big bro. And bro hops in front of Zoro and start beating the shit out of the pastafista. Then eventually it was like, hold on buddy, you getting a little out of hand. It grabbed Chopper and it was about to shoot a whole beam at bro. But luckily for Chopper, Frankie came in to save the day and knocks the beam out of the way before he hits Chopper. And after that, bro just start welling on him, giving him the work. I mean, at least it seemed like it until he weaved in his punch and gave Buddy a knuckle sandwich. Next, Brooke start running on the trees and he hops off and start diving towards the pastafista. He tries to land an attack with his sword, but in fact, it didn't do anything at all, but he just got stuck. And I gave her the opportunity to shoot at him. But luckily for Clutch God, Usopp this man was able to clutch up and was able to save Brook in the process but not only that he was able to knock it down and see that's why I call him the clutch God Usopp this man really be coming in the clutch like this man really knocked it down like that's that's tough that's what I'm talking about that's why he's the MVP that's why he's the GOAT the GOAT a few minutes later but after that it gets back up and they catch nami running and was getting ready to shoot another beam out his mouth but luckily robin came in the clutch and slammed this man's head down giving the opportunity for nami to also strike and electrocute this motherfucker and now due to the fact that everybody was beating the shit out of it it is now out of control and shooting beams everywhere and now that just gave them the opportunity to finish it off so first we start with Sanji, he run up towards it and jumps up and kicks the shit out of it. Bro was burnt up into pure flames. And next, this man Zoro, he pulls out his Ashura form. And he didn't waste no time, he went straight to Slice and Dyson. Had that thing in shambles. And last but not least, this man Luffy goes third gear, falling full speed ahead towards this man. And finish Buddy off. And now we're about to get to the part that you guys been waiting for, the Kizaru pack up. But before that, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you made it this far. And also join my Discord, I'm planning on doing some fun things in the future, so make sure you guys tap in. But with that being said, let's get back to the video. So we start off with this man Kizaru pulling up on a fucking cannonball, bro. Man's pulling up even more flashier than Buggy himself. And while he was done with that, this man had this dramatic explosion behind him. And bro was standing between these father pirates. And bro was acting like he had the VVS's on his wrist. Who do bro think he is? Anyways, after all that, we next see Kizaru posted up right here. And these nobody pirates. Well, this pirate in Pacifically. His homie was trying to tell him, nah, don't shoot him. This man still took a shot at fate and shot this man. And the bullet went past his head. And you would think somebody smart enough would be like, oh shit, it didn't have no effect on him. I should run, right? But nah, bro was like, let me make sure my eyes wasn't tweaking. And he shoots at him again. 
And like again, it had no effect on this man whatsoever. Then now they decided, oh shit, it's time to run. But as they was running, this man Kizaru pulled up right in front of them. And he was asking them a question and they didn't listen to him. They just started running away from him again. So Kizaru disrespect them. He didn't even shoot at them. He shot a beam in the middle of them and they were just like, what the fuck just happened? And then when they look back at Kizaru, we get this big ass explosion right there. And you know what bro said? Wow, I guess I don't know my own strength. Bro know damn well he's capping. But anyways, we next see this man Kizaru pulled up in front of Hawkins' face. And bro was just sitting there nonchalantly playing Yu-Gi-Oh and shit. While Kizaru talked some, hello. And Hawkins was like, bro go on somewhere. Then Kizaru was like, you is a bitch ass nigga. Now you die. And bro kicks the shit out of Hawkins, bro. Sending buddy flying. And bro was trying to make sure he was dead because he shot an extra beam at him. And bro gave no fucks at all but luckily hawkins he survived that attack due to his powers so next after that it became a 1v3 and kizaru was like a female that wanted attention because he'll try to tell him that he's here too and these motherfuckers wasn't listening little did they know that the amaru stocks was up around this time so with that being said this man kizaru kicked the shit out of magma and no that wasn't no ordinary kick this man was thinking about what the next meal he was gonna eat bro most death disrespectful for that one i ain't gonna lie and next after that Hawkins he pulls up behind him and tries to attack him but as you can clearly see that did not work at all and then immediately after this man Kizaru put both of his fingers in front of his eyes and at first I thought he was gonna shoot this man's eyes out but nah bro just blinds this man and starts shooting the hell out of him until all his fucking lights runs out like bro is in a video game or some shit and as he was about to finish him off with his final attack a pole pulls up and start playing music and I'm not gonna lie that jazz went so hard for no reason and at first i was like damn he got a hit off kizaru that's crazy and then after that he just took off running and i wouldn't blame him but he couldn't run for too long because this man kizaru created a light mirror and this man zigzag towards him and kicks the shit out of him and drake looking at the light like i'm glad that's not me well i got news for you buddy and then immediately after he takes down hawkins and bro was just walking devious like mission complete